Well, I hope you got a chance to just read through James 1, 19 through to 27. And you may have noticed there's a, a bit of a common thread that goes through this passage in James. Uh, the common thread is that your behaviour should reflect what you believe. And that's a little bit like, I guess, uh, the fruit on a tree. And so look here what we have in our, our backyard. We've got um, uh, a veggie garden and uh, we've got, look, some chilies growing in our chili plant down here and this is our lemon tree which um look to be honest hasn't really borne a lot of fruit i know it's a lemon tree because we have had at least two lemons off it but it's not doing so great in fact actually i think i'd rather have a banana tree and so what 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 should i do if i want to change uh this lemon tree into a banana tree i've got the perfect solution i get a banana and I change the fruit, right? Ta-da! And now our lemon tree is a banana tree. I'm so clever. And I think you know how ridiculous that is, right? You can't change the nature of a tree just by changing its fruit. You actually have to change the tree itself so that it produces new fruit. Perhaps I need to graft a different tree, a different fruit onto there. Maybe I would need to use some kind of magic powers to change it from a lemon tree into a banana tree. But the fact remains, if I just change the fruit by sticking a banana on a lemon tree, that doesn't make it all of a sudden a banana tree. And I think sometimes we think about ourselves that way. You know, we've got problems. We don't speak uh, with language that is necessarily polite or full of grace and seasoned with salt. Uh, we have bad habits. We have sinful behaviours in our life that we find really hard to get rid of. And we work really hard at trying to change the fruit so I can speak nicer and people will think that I'm a lovely person or I'll, I'll try and work really hard on my behaviours. But what has to happen first is that we need our hearts changed, right? That's what we need changed first. It's not the fruit that changes first, it's the heart that changes first, and then the fruit. In this passage in James, that's what we see, that our behaviours need to reflect what we believe. We have to get our beliefs right first before it changes our behaviours. What is that like? Ah, I've, I've got an idea. Let me, let me go show you. Uh, here, let's have a quick look in my shed. Uh, here it is, uh, tools, drill press, um, motorbike, and, uh, and up the back here, my bicycle and uh, my yellow BMX. But what do we have here? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. We've got a huge problem. That's right, I've got a flat tire on my BMX. Um, and you know what? I had to change my BMX tyre here like twice with new tubes before I realised that actually the reason why it kept popping, even when I put a new tube in, was because it had this little sucker just stuck inside the rim, this little sharp bit. So even though I kept changing the tube with something new, something better, it just kept popping. Uh, and so it didn't really matter how many times I changed the tube. I actually needed to get rid of the problem at the heart of the issue before I could actually fix my tube. Doesn't that sound a little bit like what James says here at the very beginning of uh, chapter 1, verse 19? What does he say? My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. So automatically you think, okay, I just need to be less angry, more calm, you know, goose for our bar. Goose for our bar. Just calm down, listen. If I work on my listening, everything will be fine. But really, actually, that's just a symptom. H how do you fix the symptom of being angry all the time and not listening? Well, he goes on to say, therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word that is already planted in you. That's what can save you. You see, that's like the little screw that is stuck in the rim of my tire. You can keep changing the tube all you like. You can keep practicing your listening. You can keep telling yourself, don't be so angry, don't be so angry, and then getting angry at yourself for being so angry. But you're not really changing 
the, the, the heart of the issue. You're not really changing the thing that is causing the problem. What do you need to change so you can listen first and be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry? You need to accept the word, that which is planted already in you. That's what can save you. Uh, you need to get to the heart of the issue before you change your behavior. So why don't you pause now and just uh, think for a second about, uh, about that. Um, here's a question for you. I've written it down. Um, how do you humbly accept the word? That's what I want you to do. Pause and think to yourself, how do you humbly accept the word that is already planted in you? What do you do? All right, pause and we'll be right back in a second. You know how uh, sometimes you're out kind of working in the garden and uh, getting your hands dirty and then and then sometimes you just you stop to just kind of think about you know what you've been doing with your life and you don't kind of realize that maybe um, the dirt on your hands is just kind of rubbed off on your face and so you know you just keep working you've got no idea that you've got a big dirty smudge on your face until you go inside and you get to the bathroom and uh, you look in the mirror and then all of a sudden you're like ah oh, oh my goodness I didn't realize that all this stuff on my hands just rubbed off on my face oh what do you do well it, it's a pretty easy fix you just got to go to the um, sink pour some water out and then rub it off your face. Do you ever find that you notice you've got a big dirty smudge on your face and then you're kind of like, oh, oh well. And then you walk off again. Not really thinking about it anymore. Getting on with your life. Maybe going and sitting down in the kitchen and making yourself a cup of tea and just kind of doing your homework. And then next thing you know, you meet somebody and uh, you're chatting to them and you don't really think anything of it. But uh, they're looking at you a little bit weird and you can't understand why. And then you remember, that's right, I forgot to wipe off that big dirty smudge all over my face. Well, that's the same illustration that James uses in our second point. Let me just sit you down here. How about that? What does he say? We've got a problem. We have lives that sometimes get a bit dirty and a bit smudged. And he says, don't merely listen to the word, but actually do what it says. Don't merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but then doesn't do what it says is like someone who looks at their face in the mirror and after looking at themselves, goes away and immediately forgets what they look like. They forget they've got this big dirty smudge on their face and they walk around still looking like an idiot even though they knew that it was there right if you don't put the word into practice after receiving it as it's implanted in you then you're not going to be able to notice this and then do something about it but he says verse 25 whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they'll be blessed in what they do. So what's the problem? The problem is, is that we sin. We, we make mistakes. We get dirty marks on our face. We, we smudge our lives in lots of different ways. What's the cure? It's not to just fix your behaviors. It's actually to firstly notice it. And how do you notice you've got a, a dirty smudge on your face? We you look in the mirror. How do you know if there's something wrong with your life? Well, you look and you meditate on God's perfect law. You look intently into God's perfect law, and that helps us to see the problems in our own life so that we might then repent and put our faith in Jesus and his forgiveness. We don't kind of look into God's perfect law, listen to it, and then kind of go, eh, actually, I'm happy to go along with my sin. I don't worry about the, the dirty smudge. No, we listen to the word we do what it says. What does the word say? The word says, repent and believe in the Lord Jesus. That's the gospel. And if you do that, you'll be blessed in what you do. So here's my question for you. How do you reflect on yourself? How do you notice what your life is like? 
how is your self-awareness, I guess is the question I'm asking. And then my other question is, how do you measure your life? How do you work out if you're living a good life or if you've got some dirty marks that need to be washed off? Um, you pause and think about that question. I'm going to go wash this off my face. Well, that's better. Uh, now, maybe some of you are starting to think that because we're talking about changing the tree, the core of you, your heart, before changing your behaviours, that maybe we're saying you don't need to change your behaviours. And that's not what we're saying. We're saying get your heart right first, right? We're saying you need to believe the word, humbly accept it, that's planted in you. We say that you need to meditate on God's law so you can know yourself, you can reflect and then you can repent and believe the gospel. That's how you'll live a blessed and free life. We're saying do those things first and then out of that, you'll fix your speech, you'll fix your anger, you'll fix any dirty marks on your life. We're just trying to get the order right. Fix the heart first and that'll fix your behaviours. Don't try and work on your behaviours and then not actually think about how you receive the word and how you reflect on God's perfect law. And especially as we come to this last part in this passage of James, James really wants you to put your faith to work. He says, don't deceive yourselves. He says, those who consider themselves religious and do not keep a tight rein on their tongues, deceive themselves and their religion, their worship is worthless. No worship that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress. They're the ones in our society, I guess, would be the modern equivalent of those who need help, right? Those who are, are helpless and vulnerable. This is the way you put your worship into practice. You show love and concern and help to those who need it, rather than just saying, well, go be warm and well-fed. No, in their distress, and you keep yourself from being polluted by the world, right? You do need to put your faith into practice. Put your faith to work so that you don't deceive yourself. You know, uh, there might be rooms in your house where uh, there's quite a little bit of mess. Um, maybe because there's been some homeschooling, there's textures everywhere. Uh, maybe there's lots of dishes still in the sink, things that haven't been put away. Look, there's cups and things over there. You might even notice um, things on the floor like a, uh, an orange wig, who knows, any manner of things. And you might look at that mess and say, oh, it's so messy. I wish someone would clean this up and then just walk out of the room and forget about it. Now, once you've noticed it and you've seen it, just like looking at a dirty mark on your face in the mirror, you're supposed to do something about it. Put your faith to work. You know, start putting away uh, the pens, putting them in their pencil case, start putting the books away, back up on their shelf. Ta-da, nice and tidy. Start doing things to put your faith to work. Once you've got your beliefs right, put them to work. So let me ask you this last and final question as we think about this passage in James. What is the practical evidence for your faith, right? How do your beliefs work themselves out in practice is another way to ask that question because the big common thread that runs all the way through this passage, and I would say actually kind of runs all the way through the book of James, is that your behavior should reflect what you believe. The gospel of grace, Jesus is Lord, life is only to be found in him. All right, let me... Finish there and you can do the last question. What is the evidence, the practical evidence for your faith? See ya.